three games out of the second AL wildcard spot. With just eight games left, it's a must-win situation this afternoon as they face the defending world champs. Here's Matt Baskersian. Chasing a handful of teams with the calendar a menacing foe, the Yankees started their last homestand Friday night. Leaning on veterans that know October, New York's recipe of long balls, a record-setting grand slam, an ace summoning the past, and the game's all-time finisher provided the Yankees a needed step on what they hope is a comeback playoff journey. The trail continues next. And on this last day of summer, Fox Saturday Baseball welcomes you to New York for a battle between two perennial postseason forces, the San Francisco Giants and the New York Yankees. A glance at the pregame AL wildcard standings, the Yankees with eight left to play, three back of that second wildcard spot. With that, we welcome you inside the broadcast booth at Yankee Stadium with Tim McCarver, Matt Vasquez, and Tim, the, uh, the fun historical context of a Yankees Giants series in New York overshadowed this time of year of course by the postseason picture a picture the Yankees are a part of but on the outside looking in well you hear that expression all the time in baseball one game at a time the Yankees can't think that way they have to think in bunches and maybe that's what Alex Rodriguez was thinking last night in the seventh inning of a tie ball game when he hit a record breaking 24th Grand Slam home run as the Yankees went on to win it five to one. Well, this weekend, the Giants return to their roots, having once called the Polo Grounds home, and a rich tradition that dates back to the 1800s and includes moments like the Mays catch, the shot heard round the world. This edition of the Giants has traveled from the West Coast. They'll try to ruin a season for a very old rival, a Yankees team that's hanging on to playoff hopes by the thinnest of threads. First pitch from the Bronx is next.
52 mild, comfortable degrees for game two of this Yankees Giants series. Here's how Bruce Bochy aligns his guys. The Giants starting lineup brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you got to live Moss. Pagan, Blanco, and Belt off the top, and a trio of two time All Stars bat four through six. Buster Posey, Hunter Pence, and Pablo Sandoval switch hitting DH today. Hector Sanchez in the seventh spot. Brandon Crawford and Tony Abreu round things up for San Francisco. And on the mound for the Yankees, making his 19th starting assignment of the year, the 26 year old right hander, Ivan Nova. Ivan Nova has quietly been very hot. He's lost only one game since early August. That was last Sunday against the Boston Red Sox, the red hot Red Sox, I might add. Good curveball. So Ivan Nova, who will not only start today, but will start one more time uh, before the season's over. The Yankees have eight games remaining, and to reiterate what we said on the opening, for the most part, they have to run the tape. And certainly Yvonne Nova and the rest of the pitching staff aware of that they got a great start from CC Sabathia yesterday to keep hope alive. Ready for baseball this afternoon the opening pitch is brought to you by Budweiser the official beer of Major League Baseball great times are waiting grab some buds. Angel Pagan set to start things out for San Francisco this afternoon Pagan Blanco and Belt. Well, Angel Pagan, the former New York Met, he, like the rest of his giant teammates, began this week on the other side of town. The series against the Mets at City Field. And a short trip across town to continue this road journey for San Francisco. Finds the Giants here in the Bronx this afternoon, where Pagan takes strike one. Nothing and one to Angel Pagan. And Ivan Nova with a quick fastball to make it a one two. That little head shake means Angel Pagan disagrees with home plate umpire Doug Eddings. The 0 2 pitch home to Pagan. He checks his swing. It's a ball and two strikes. There's a good curveball from Ivan Nova. Perhaps more than any of the Yankee pitchers, Nova, because of the movement on his fastball, has to keep the ball down. You hear that expression a lot. Most of the time it's true. Often working one corner or the other corner is a better way to go after hitters. Another breaking ball. That one misses down low. Two balls and two strikes to Angel Pagan. Well, Joe Girardi will be the first to tell you that although the curveball is Ivan Nova's best weapon and it's what he prefers to finish at bats, he is only as good every five days as his fastball command will allow. True of many pitchers, it's a point most magnified with Nova. Still the best pitch in the game. Two balls and two strikes to Angel Pagan. Bounced back up the middle for the shortstop this afternoon, Brendan Ryan, who gets Pagan by a half a step. Let's take a look at the Yankees on defense. Only the Baltimore Orioles and Tampa Bay Rays have had a better statistical season fielding the ball than the Yankees. Soriano, Granderson, and Ichiro in the outfield this afternoon. Eduardo Nunez makes just his seventh start of the season at third. Ryan Cano and Reynolds round out the infield, and it's Chris Stewart. Handling Ivan Nova today. So one gone now for the left handed hitting Gregor Blanco. Bruce Bochy has, in fact, stacked up a lot of left handed at bats against Ivan Nova this afternoon. A handful of switch hitters. The only true right handed batters for the Giants in the lineup today are Posey and Pence in the four and five spot. Blanco slices that into the opposite field. Soriano plays it on a hop. And it's a one out single for Gregor Blanco. Soriano probably playing a little too deep. Has to go a long way for a guy with not a lot of power the other way. That's Blanco. The dive necessary, a good play to keep it in front of him. And I think Soriano a little upset he didn't come up with that ball.
So a one out base runner now, and that'll bring up the left handed hitting Brandon Belt. How about the year he's had? Belt at 290. 16 home runs, 62 driven in, and one of the few Giants to have flourished down the stretch offensively. He has done his best work since the beginning of August, hitting 358 from that time forward. And you can't necessarily say that about some of the more veteran, more accomplished Giant hitters. Blanco with a big lead and Belt falls behind nothing in two. Three seventy one in the season's final month Belt making a strong push. Though it comes at a time when the overall good can't possibly be served. It's been a very frustrating championship title defense run for the 2013 Giants. Ball and two strike to count home to Brandon Belt. Not the kind of number that uh, Bruce Bochy wants to see a lot of, but the uh, defending World Series champions winning percentage at 461, one of the worst by a defending series winner. The 98 Marlins are safe. I, I don't see another World Series team going 54 and 108, but one no. never knows. No. That's losing uh, two out of every three games. As the Marlins did in 1998. But Bruce telling us before the game that the inability to do the routine things, the most bothersome thing about the Giants this year, routine being defense, base running, the staples of the game. Big leadoff first for Blanco and a breaking ball misses the corner, two balls and two strikes. I think the cliff notes on the Giants failures of 2013 start and perhaps end with some on the pitching side of the equation. But to your point Tim Bruce Bochy telling us earlier the pitching has been a little better down the stretch. Mm -hmm. It's been the inability to deliver a big hit and make the routine play that has been most costly for the Giants this year. Here's the 2 2 home a swing and a miss. Well, a snapshot glance of the Giants season and some of their frustrations. First, we'll talk about the Yankees and their season review. 27 trips to the DL. They've used more players on this year's roster than ever before in franchise history. Alfonso Soriano came in July at the big August and kept them in the postseason conversation. A conversation they are still in three back with eight to play. Here's Buster Posey now. The two time all star is just two for his last 25 and uh, is one of those we talked about earlier who is kind of sputtering down the finish. Blanco has looked as though he'd like to run. He Since has getting on base. Yeah, you try to choose the the breaking ball, the tougher pitch to handle for the catcher. And Posey wraps it to shortstop for the sure gloved Brendan Ryan to wrap up the side in the top of the first. Nothing for the Giants. Half inning gone. San Francisco zero. The Yankees coming to bat.
of the first where we take a look at Joe Girardi's Yankees. The Yankees starting lineup brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you got to live Moss between Ichiro and Curtis Granderson. The first through fifth spots in the order a combined 39 all star appearances for the Yankees. Nunez and Reynolds bat in the six and seven spot Brendan Ryan and Chris Stewart round things out for New York today. These Yankees taking swings against the 36 year old 2010 all star right hander Ryan Vogel song. Ryan's numbers are not good. Just about two months with a broken right hand. He moves the fastball in and out. He was at his best in last year's postseason. 2 and 0 against the Cardinals 1 and 0 against Detroit. Good change up. He relies on that against left handed hitters. Like Ichiro Suzuki who leads things off for New York. Ichiro Alex Rodriguez and Robinson Cano for the Yankees to get us going in the first. A 10 time all star checking in at 263 to start play this afternoon. As he lays off a 1 0 pitch. Two balls and no strikes to the Yankees leadoff hitter. That's last night's hero Alex Rodriguez batting second again this afternoon the grand slam. The difference maker in the Yankees series opening win yesterday as Ichiro slaps a 2 0 pitch to second for Tony Abreu and there's one away. So now a rod. Who last night delivered the big blow. The grand slam that delivered a Yankee win and set a new major league record for career grand slams. A Rod has been with the Yankees for about two months, and that was the first time that he had hit with the bases loaded. And did he ever deliver with his 24th career grand slam? Passing Hall of Famer Lou Gehrig, with whom he had been tied for quite a while. 24 career grand slams for A Rod. The home run yesterday, the slam that is, home run number 654, as he continues to creep up on Willie Mays for number four on the all time list. Mays was 660. And that was a number that certainly Yankee fans and Yankee administration thought that uh, Alex Rodriguez would have achieved by now. But it has been a, another injury filled season for a rod. His future very much in doubt not only with the Yankees but in terms of Major League Baseball. Sure. His 211 game PED suspension under appeal. We won't know the outcome of that until the regular season has ended. It's chopped foul and it's now still a ball and two strikes from Ryan Vogelsong. You know Matt uh, concerning that grand slam last night Joe Girardi had a very interesting comment when we met with him about two hours before the game saying that when Alex Rodriguez grounded out a second at bat he looked more flexible running to first base. He has had problems with the lower part of his body hitting almost with just his arms. But Girardi noticing that there was he, he wasn't faster to first base but Joe noticed that he was more flexible which may have added to that fourth time up when he had grand slam number 24 in his career. Two balls and two strikes from Ryan Vogelsong tried to check his swing but went around. And there are two gone in the Yankee half of the first. That was the first breaking ball thrown by Vogelsong. Let's take a look at it pitch by pitch as Ryan gets ahead of Rodriguez. The 0 2 pitch missing. And then after fouling one off, fastball inside. First breaking ball of the sequence, a slider to get a run. So two gun bases empty now for the five time All Star Robinson Cano. What has ailed the Yankee lineup down the stretch certainly has been no fault of Robinson Cano's. He picks on the first pitch here, however, another tapper for Abreu and a very quick one, two, three, bottom of the first for Ryan Vogelsong to the second scoreless at Yankee Stadium.
2013 Ford F-150 with EcoBoost. And by Taco Bell's new fiery Doritos Locos Tacos, Liv Moss. Picture postcard afternoon in New York City. Welcome back to the Bronx. The Yankees and Giants scoreless after an inning of baseball. Back with Tim McCarver and Ken Rosenthal, Matt Vaskersian, Hunter Pence will lead things off for the Giants. The 5 6 7 part of the order for San Francisco. It'll be Pence, Sandoval, and Sanchez. Well, the two time All Star Hunter Pence had been going gangbusters a couple of weeks ago, was the hottest hitter in the circuit. He's since cooled off. And after that ground ball to short is over his last 10. Tim time to take a look at our four keys to the game. Well the Giants uh, what's left of the season. Uh, seven games for them eight for the Yankees finish on a high note and the Yankees must run the table talking about living Moss the Yankees have to win Moss for the rest of the year. <laughs> Boy, and Joe Girardi in such a tough spot to try to manage each game to win, yet still pay attention to tomorrow because, boy, with eight games left, there is no tomorrow without today. Boy, is that is that a great point? And very simple from what Joe uh, was explaining. Yes, we're concerned with today, but obviously, yes, we're concerned with tomorrow and next week too. Ball and no strikes. The count to Pablo Sandoval behind a fastball that time, one and one. Kind of takes you out of the routine of the game. You talk to players throughout the year and they say, All we need to do is think about today and win today. And the Yankees can't do that. They not only have to win today, but tomorrow. Sandoval into right center field and well struck. Granderson looking up and playing it off the wall. Pablo Sandoval who came into the game this afternoon just five for his last 26 with a bullet for a double here in the second. That's about in the same locale that he hit his first home run off Justin Verlander in his first at bat in last year's World Series. A World Series game in which he homered three times. This ball not quite as far short hopping the fence for a double. Loads of power. So an RBI opportunity now for Hector Sanchez, the first of the game. Sandoval in scoring position with just one away. Hector Sanchez, one of a couple of catchers, a number of catchers on the Giants roster at this time of year, and DHing today. The Giants have really traveled well not to borrow the old college football term but it, it remains true there's a whole lot of burnt orange in the Bronx these days that's on the ground for Nunez and there are two away. That's what happens when you leave a city uh, in 1957 after the 57 season go to San Francisco and win two out of three World Series. A lot of burn orange. Couldn't help but overhearing a conversation yesterday between uh, Yankee fans and Giant fans here in the ballpark, and the question posed by the Yankee fan was, "Bought your plane tickets back in April, did you?" <laughs> because I think a lot of the Giant fans that had this week's calendar circled, mm -hmm. you know, a series at City Field, a series here. This is a defending World Series champ, and these games were supposed to mean a whole lot more. So, what better excuse? For uh, someone from Northern California to come to New York City in the late summer, early fall. Go to the Apple. Nothing and one the counts of Brandon Crawford trying to pick up Sandoval from second with two gone now. Ball and a strike to count to Brandon Crawford. You know, we sound like a bit of a broken record when we talk about Giants offense sputtering down the stretch, and Crawford's numbers are no exception. In terms of today's matchups, however, a guy who's hitting just over a buck fifty his last three weeks welcomes the opportunity to swing the bat in the daytime where Crawford has been. Much more effective at the plate. 
two balls and two strikes. Certainly more opportunities at night, but almost a hundred points better under the sunshine. Two balls and two strikes with two away. Man at second and a swing and a miss. Second strike out of the afternoon by Ivan Nova. Strands a runner in scoring position. To the home half of the second, Alfonso Soriano leads off scoreless. are waiting grab some buds back for the bottom half of the second Alfonso Soriano leads things off for the Yankees middle of the order for Joe Girardi Soriano Granderson and Nunez against Brian Vogelsong whose first pitch home to Soriano misses off the corner seven time all star 263 batting average 16 home runs and 49 driven in Without Alfonso Soriano's return to pinstripes, the Yankees likely aren't even as close as three out in the wild card where they sit today. Since coming back to New York, he leads all of Major League Baseball with those numbers you just saw the 16 home runs and 49 runs batted in. Averaging an RBI a game, darn near it, or a stake a day. <laughs> As the doctors might like to talk about it. Uh, I know the Yankees could not have dreamed of getting a better performance out of Soriano when they made the move back in late July, July 26th. In front, three balls and a strike. His month of August was. As robust a month as anybody could ever dream of. It Certainly was, Soriano himself. It was August. August, if you will. 11 home runs in 28 games. A high fly ball out to left. Blanco tracking this one near the wall in the corner to make the catch. And there is an exhale and an out for Ryan Vogelsong. We say hello to Ken Rosenthal for the first time this afternoon. Kenny talking about Ryan Vogelsong. Certainly injuries have been a part of his 2013 but this has not been the kind of season he expected coming off of that magical run last year. Not at all Matt and his velocity of late 88 mile per hour range last year it was almost 91 
So it begs the question, did pitching in the World Baseball Classic last March affect him? I asked Vogelsong this yesterday. He said he doesn't regret it. He treasured the experience. But the honest answer to that question is that he doesn't know if it affected him. But Tim, he goes deep into last October. He then revs it up again in March. You have to wonder, an older pitcher, how much of an impact it made. I don't think there is any question that the Giants have several issues with some of their players that played in the World Baseball Classic. Bruce Bochy has been uh, rather outspoken. He's not against it the next time it comes around. That's headed for the gap in left center. Laying out is Blanco, however, to make a fine diving catch. Gregor Blanco has actually started more games in center field than left field this year. So the Giants have two center fielders in their outfield. Not only Pagan in center, but Blanco in left. And he showed uh, the baseball world last year how good a defensive left fielder he was against Detroit. Well, a very difficult catch to make for a guy that wears his glove on his right hand, having to go across his body to make that catch in the gap. And there are two gone now for Eduardo Nunez. Five up, five down for Ryan Vogelsong this afternoon. But it's you know worth continuing the discussion on Vogelsong and the decision he made to play in the World Baseball Classic as Ken Rosenthal reports one that he did not regret. It's a discussion we'll have to table for future innings as Vogelsong makes quick work of the Yankees for the second straight inning. We'll return to the Bronx after a word from your local Fox station. Three, the number nine hitter Tony Abreu, then the top of the order Pagan and Blanco for the Giants. Ivan Nova's first offering leading off the inning is one hopped out to Eduardo Nunez. And Abreu's a quick out to open the inning. Talking last inning about the World Baseball Classic and the Giants among many teams that sent a handful of players. Here's Angel Pagan now with one away. And we were discussing whether or not that ramped up program in March had any effect on Ryan Vogelsong's apparent down year in 2013. The fact is that the injury bug has struck both of these teams. 
some players that played in the World Baseball Classic and others did not. Angel Pagan is a player who participated in the event. Mm -hmm. Yet his injury had nothing to do for the most part. We don't know with certainty if maybe it was something that was aggravated when he was playing for Team Puerto Rico, but everything we do know about it looks like he heard it on the play that he went down on and that was against the Colorado Rockies in May legging out a game winning inside the park home run one that went on to cost him a significant chunk of the rest of the year 82 games I'll say the one one home to him another bouncer to second Cano gobbles this one up and there are two away. Well, he was the heart and soul of so much of the Giants' success in 2012, but on May 25th of this year, Giants got a run in the 10th, and Pagan became the first San Francisco player to end a game with an inside-the-park home run. Giants win it by one. They were very much a, a part of the top of the division at that point. And uh, as the old saying goes, it was downhill from there. Swinging bunt, if you will, from Gregor Blanco, Ichiro style, to put him behind 0 and 1. Plus, it's the competition in the postseason. I think what the Giants are going through this year, they won two out of three World Series. They were not in the postseason in 2011. But that, as Ken Rosenthal mentioned, that late October competition is a lot different than competition. During the regular season. And I think the Giants are paying for that this year. Or at least in part, they're paying for that. You not only pay for it by losing draft choices, but you pay for it also. I mean, the body gets weary when it competes, or you you're you're glad that you're competing, but when it competes in late October, it's a different type of competition. A ball and two strikes. The count to Gregor Blanco. Off the end of the bat on a couple of hops for Brendan Ryan and three ground ball outs make for a tidy top of the third for Ivan Nova. Two and a half gone. Scoreless at Yankee Stadium.
new building still filled with all kinds of terrific history and uh, what better platform for it than a Giants Yankees weekend afternoon. Mark Reynolds leads things off in the third. It'll be the bottom third of the order. The Yankees looking for their first base runner today against the stingy Ryan Vogel song. Reynolds, Ryan, and Stewart for New York. Big breaking ball misses up around the face, and it's a ball and a strike to Reynolds, who begins the afternoon just one for his last 20. A notorious feast or famine type hitter is in the midst of a bit of a hunger strike, it would appear. <laughs> Two balls and a strike to count to Mark Reynolds. With the big picture for the Yankees still being the hunt for the postseason, you're not hearing a lot of discussion about individual numbers. You do when they're big, like the grand slam that Alex Rodriguez hit yesterday. But one of the numbers we seem to have watched a lot with Mark Reynolds is strikeouts, and for very good reason. A few years ago setting a single season record for strikeouts 223 as a Diamondback. The 2 2 pitch to him. A full count now three balls and two strikes. Brendan Ryan waiting next base is empty starting things out here in the third. Broken bat flare into shallow left field for a base hit. What happens when you put the ball in play? There are a lot of uh, young players that are coming up through the minor leagues in baseball who thinks that, well, strikeouts and out. But if you put the ball in play, clunkers count as hits too. They're forgotten about it the next morning. So the base hit coming on a 3 2 pitch and putting the leadoff hitter aboard in the Yankee half of the third. Again, their first base runner of the day, and now Brendan Ryan. Bunning opportunity right here, I would think. Brendan Ryan batting below 200. Tie game early. Good bunter also. And Ryan does shorten up, pushes it foul. Brendan Ryan making his 10th start as a Yankee. Since the acquisition coming from the Seattle Mariners for a player to be named later, seven for 30 in his nine previous starts in pinstripes, and certainly not brought over here to swing for the fences. But when it was learned that Derek Jeter would miss the remainder of the 2013 season, the general manager Brian Cashman and his staff going out and looking for somebody who could play the position every day and make the routine play. And Ryan gives him a little bit more than that. He's been known as a very good defender throughout his career. He is the wrong guy to hit it to on defense. Talk about a double play as a pitcher's best friend. A shortstop like Bryant, like uh, Brendan Ryan, is a pitcher's best friend. Anything on the ground to the left, he catches. A ball and a strike now from Ryan Vogelsong. Got a couple of good defensive shortstops matching up here today. Excellent. Brandon Crawford, not quite the household name, at least not outside uh, the West Coast, but he's had a very fine defensive year. A ball and a strike to count home to Brendan Ryan. You know, it's funny, Joe Girardi telling us for back to back weekends now that managing on the East Coast and in New York in particular, where it's just an envelope that is sometimes sealed off to the rest of the planet, <laughs> it feels like games played in San Francisco are in another country. Mm -hmm. Not often getting a chance to see the Giants play on TV. And I think. A lot of East Coast teams feel that way about the West Coast. No disrespect. Reynolds runs and Ryan shoots one into left center field. That'll get Mark Reynolds to third and the Yankees are in business in their half of the third inning. 
Just thinking uh, hit and run in that situation. Think about the wisdom of it. He tries to bunt. He bunts it foul. Then he takes two balls. You know that the Giants aren't going to pitch out. And a couple of steps. Mark Reynolds looks back. First and third. Nobody out. Better to hit and run with a guy who can handle the bat. Not a good hitter. But put the runner in motion. Two clunkers. And the Yankees have runners on with nobody out. Chris Stewart now he did not start game one of the series last night. Runners at the corners nobody out in the third. The bombers need clunkers. <laughs> the bombers will take a cylinder that fires in any capacity at this level of the game. That's true. Three out with eight to play. Certainly worth repeating the urgency around this thing from New York's perspective. A handful of teams to get past in the wild card race and. Joe Girardi pretty clear with a win out philosophy from here through next weekend. Park your pride at the door. Top of the order due up next. Vogel song again out of the stretch and the 1 0 misses the corner two balls and no strikes. Just to recap that AL wildcard picture and the Yankees three out with Kansas City Baltimore and Texas in the way. Speaking of Texas, I mean, you talk about falling off the face of the earth. Four and 14 in the month of September, one of the worst September records in baseball. And they have played themselves right out of a wild card spot this month. On September 1st, the Texas Rangers were a game in first place in the American League West. They trailed the Oakland Athletics by seven and a half as we speak. So they've lost eight and a half games in 20 days mm. in September. And there's ball four home to Chris Stewart. Ken Rosenthal, the American League wildcard race is likely to go down to the final weekend, if not the final hours of 2013. Absolutely, Matt. And keep your eye on the Indians. They've got by far the easiest remaining schedule of any AL wildcard contender. And here's what I'm talking about. Two more games at home against the Astros. Then two at home against the White Sox. Then four in Minnesota. Eight straight games against the three worst clubs in the league. Think about it. The Indians get to the wild card game. They win the wild card game. And then guess what we have? Terry Francona against the Boston Red Sox. Oh boy. Oh boy. Set for all kinds of fun there. Well, the remaining schedules for the AL wild card contenders, and we did not put the Yankees on this because we'll talk about them separately. Baltimore has a really tough road to hoe. Three at Tampa Bay, three versus Toronto, and then three against the Red Sox. And you see that Cleveland schedule as Kenny mentions. Here's Ichiro now with the bases loaded. Nobody out in the third. I don't know strength of schedule by opponents and you and I've had this discussion Tim. This ain't the NFL. With September roster expansion it baseball is a different animal when you try to quantify a schedule. Right. Ask the Pittsburgh Pirates about rolling over easy opponents. They lost three out of four this week to the second division San Diego Padres. Mm -hmm. A ball and a strike to count to Ichiro. He grounded out in his first try today. To one and two. With nobody out and two strikes on each row, I'd play the infield in right now. It's highly unusual, but you're not going to double him up. At least you got to figure that. And any ground ball to a middle infielder, you can come home with the ball, save the run, because you're not going to double up each row. Still the ball and two strikes. Or play him halfway. Bruce Bochy could play Crawford and Abreu halfway and then have the option of coming home or go to second on a double play or a double play attempt. 
Alex Rodriguez waiting next. Bases loaded, nobody out. New York trying to get on the board first. Ichiro swings and sends a fly ball into medium center. Pagan measures it off to make the catch. Reynolds will tag up. The throw comes into third on Ryan. He's safe there, and the Yankees lead it 1 0. How many times have you seen a guy go from one base to the other when he's behind the bag? Brendan Ryan with an extra step, and he's safe at third base. Not a good play by. Angel Pagan going to third. Now you allow a runner to, to go to second. The Yankees not only get the lead, but they get a runner at third and less than two out. So with Stewart and Ryan in scoring position, it's Alex Rodriguez, a strikeout victim in the first. Breaking ball has him chase in its own one. Runners at second and third, one away. Robinson Cano do up next. There is nowhere to hide at this point of the Yankee lineup. Same pitch, same result. 0 and 2 now to Abra. Vogel song and Posey perhaps having Alex Rodriguez set up for the inside fastball. That's a pitch that Alex Rodriguez has had trouble with not only this year coming off the DL, but over the past couple of years. Statistically, he struggles with velocity. He didn't want that to be in the strike zone, however. The ball up and in. He'll go back to the breaking ball in all probability. Pitch selection is such a subjective thing. Buster Posey certainly knows that. Back inside, you're right. Just missed. Two balls and two strikes. I don't know. With runners on base, with nobody on, I don't think that's a bad pitch. But when he looked as bad as he did, on the two breaking balls, I don't think you can afford to come inside to A Rod. I think you've got to stay outside with a breaking ball. He's, after all, he's already set up. He's proven that on his first two swings. Hitting just 206 with runners in scoring position this year. And the 2 2, he's jammed a roller back up the middle. Crawford gets to it to retire A Rod, but it scores a second run. Two nothing Yankees. See to me, I mean, he looks that bad on two breaking balls, and then he tries to come inside with three straight fastballs, and A Rod adjusts, hits a ground ball, drives in the run. Pitch selection is very selective, but in my view, there is no way that A Rod is going to get an inside fastball to hit. He looks so bad on the first two pitches that you got to throw the breaking ball away in my view. Here's Robinson Cano now with two in and two away a runner at third. Where Alex Rodriguez had struggled driving in runs. Cano has been outstanding with runners in scoring position this year and in opportunities like this one. He's been hot overall since the beginning of August. And he hits the hole to make it 3 0 New York. How about Sandoval covering third? What? What's going on? Boy, runner at third and two away, and uh, inexplicably, and I think Pablo realizes now that he made that hole even huh. easier to hit. Uh, now, in fairness to Pablo, I, he's not going to get to that ball anyway. It's going to be in the hole, but with two out, a third baseman breaking for the bag as the ball's on the way. It's been a weird inning for the Giants defensively. Here's Alfonso Soriano now. Three strangely earned runs against Ryan Vogelsong here in the third. 
A couple of flare singles, a base on balls. All three of those have scored on a sack fly, a ground ball, and now a, a base hit. That's to the left side as well. Crawford has trouble. Throw to first is still a half step better than Soriano, and the rally dies at three. Three big runs for the Yankees, however, in their half of the third to take an early lead at home this afternoon. Official pain reliever of Major League Baseball and by Fox Sports 1. To find your channel, go to FoxSports1.com. The Yankees get three in their half of the third to give Avon Nova the advantage working in the top of the fourth. He'll go back to work against Brandon Belt, Buster Posey, and Hunter Pence. Two balls and no strikes. The count to Brandon Bell. A couple of base hits for the Giants this afternoon. A one-out single by Gregor Blanco in the first. A one-out double by Sandoval in the second. And there's a fly ball out to the opposite field. Well hit. And it bounds against the wall and up over the fence. Did Soriano see that ball? I, I do not suspect he got a very good look at that ball at any point. Was nowhere close, and that ball was tailing back to him. <laughs> Looking up, no, he had no idea. Had no idea where the ball was. So that son in left field playing havoc. Of course, the son's not in left field. It's over the stadium <laughs> as Soriano looked up. High sky today at Yankee Stadium. There's Buster Posey now with the runner in scoring position. You know the Yankees have have spoken rather admiringly of Soriano's quote improved defense. Uh, I don't think he's going to remind anybody of a Gold Glover anytime soon. But he has not committed an error since coming back to the Yankees. And for a guy who was once thought only as a DH, the Yankees have been pleasantly surprised with the level of play on defense. It did not show itself on that ball. But they'd like to think of that as an exception. One and two to Buster Posey. The great Dick Allen, who, and I say the great because he was some player. Once the game started, he didn't like team pictures, but once the game, once the game started, he was a great player. MVP of the White Sox in 72. 
And Dick said, how do you play defensive first base? Swing the bat. <laughs> With Soriano, how do you play a good defensive left field? Swing, Swing the, the bat. bat. <laughs> Dick Allen, correct me if I'm wrong, is also attributed to the line when asked about playing on AstroTurf. His response was, if a horse don't eat it, I don't want to play on it. <laughs> That's true. And the 2 2 is swung on and missed. There's the Nova curveball to finish off the MVP. And there's one away. Boy, that was a beauty right there. Coming out of nowhere. Ideal location, ideal break to get Posey. <laughs> Three strikeouts for Ivan Nova this afternoon. Now Hunter Pence. We've talked about how that's the finishing pitch of choice for Ivan Nova, that big breaking ball. There are only three pitchers in the game who have earned a bigger percentage of their strikeouts on a curveball. And Pence grounds out the third. There are two away. Well, the Yankees with a 3 0 lead this afternoon, perhaps running out of time in this AL wildcard race between innings. We visited with Joe Girardi about what kind of magic he may be able to summon as a manager down the stretch. Well, I mean, you just have to play it a day at a time, and, and that, that's all you can do. And you can't worry about, you know, will you have enough pitching tomorrow? Are you using too many guys? You just can't do that. And then you just take it a day at a time and see where you, you fall. It was interesting our conversation with you earlier this morning Joe when you were saying take it a day at a time and, and thinking about tomorrow at the same time. Yeah you know I mean you're thinking that you, you know you're going to probably almost have to run the table here but but you can't worry about what's going to happen on Sunday or what's going to happen on Tuesday or what's happening with other teams. You can only worry about yourselves and what you're doing today. Joe thanks good luck this coming week. Thanks guys. Thanks Joe. A ball and no strikes to Pablo Sandoval trying to pick up Bell to double to open the inning. I'm not sure that uh, many Yankee fans want to hear that. Everybody wants to hear that a manager has some magic formula for winning down the stretch when faced with a big deficit like the Yankees are. Fact remains exactly as Joe Girardi said. Line them up and hope you can cut into that deficit each day. Boy the Giants a team that stranded more base runners than any other club in the game has left three more so far this afternoon.
Home half of the fourth, and the Yankees start it with Curtis Granderson. Granderson, Nunez, and Reynolds. A three run strike in the third. Explains your scoreboard through three and a half. Back with Ken Rosenthal and Tim McCarver, Matt Vaskersian. Curtis Granderson is 0 for 1 this afternoon, having lined the left to start his day. A ball and a strike. Well, Ryan Vogel's song allows the three in the third. And that matches his earned run total from his last start in Los Angeles on Sunday. Hoping to polish up the end of 2013 in a little better shape than many of its months. Again, the broken hand, a big part of his season. He is one of a number of potential free agents on the field in both uniforms today. He has a club option for 2014. But it's a very interesting list of players that might be allowed to hit the market next year. As Curtis Granderson has a base hit into right. In fact, it's not just players that are on that list. Joe Girardi is among the potential names on the market for 2014 Ken Rosenthal and there's been some discussion about other suitors of late. That's right Matt and this week Cubs president Theo Epstein declined to say that Dale Swain would be back next season even though he is under contract and you could possibly see where this is going. The Cubs obviously are not going to judge Swain on his win loss record but their young players Anthony Rizzo Starlin Castro Darwin Barney have all gone backwards this season and it's possible that they're not entirely satisfied with Swain. Now Joe Girardi we all know roots in Chicago went to Northwestern his wife went to Northwestern. If he decides to go into the open market and decline an offer from the Yankees the question would be would he be willing to uproot his family. He has three children ages six to fourteen. Was so many interesting names on that list as Eduardo Nunez sends a drive to deep left and that one is gone. Nothing Yankees. We talked about the Bombers needing clunkers in the third inning, and they did, and they got them. Bombers back to being Bombers increased the lead with the two run home run by Nunez. Five nothing New York now Mark Reynolds. Second of the year for Eduardo Nunez. A ball and a strike to count to Mark Reynolds. Tampa Bay Baltimore Cleveland. All watching these games in their clubhouses. With night games tonight. When a couple of those teams having played deep into the night oh less gosh. than 24 hours ago, as Reynolds sends a fly ball out to right. In fact, speaking of the Rays and O's, they played a late one yesterday. Time for a Pepsi game break. Greg Amsinger. Matty, thanks. Let's go inside the drop. The O's and Rays head to head. Ben Zobris, bottom three against Miguel Gonzalez. Broken bat, pop up, can of corn. Scoreless, just one hit combined in the top of the fourth. Matty, these two clubs are swinging it like they just rolled out of bed, which may be the case. Back to you. Yeah, absolutely oh, right. A late one yesterday, a wild turn of events between the Rays and those Baltimore's dropped two in a row and six out of their last ten. Just two and a half back in the wild card, however, as Brendan Ryan stands in with one away. Yeah, Matt, I mistakenly said that uh, the O's in Tampa Bay were playing later on tonight. They, of course, are playing as we speak but the Cleveland Indians do have a night game they won in rain shortened fashion over Houston last night two to one after seven rains opened up and Cleveland continued winning Kansas City and Texas later tonight as well and just Two games separate those two teams, both on the outside looking into this point. The Rangers a half game back of the second wild card spot. Kansas City two and a half back. Two balls and a strike to count to Brendan Ryan. 
it's hard to imagine how uncompelling things may have been without the advent of even one wild card a number of years ago. The addition of the second wild card last year has made this time of year so much more fun in so many more major league cities. Oh yeah. We really wouldn't be talking about the Indians or the Royals nope. for the postseason if it wasn't for that new wild card format that keeps two great baseball markets very much involved at the end of the season Ken Rosenthal. Now to me the best thing about this is that first place means something. And that you have to win your division to get that by. And if you don't, you're stuck in the winner take all wild card game. Ryan with a drive to deep center. Pagan on the run, and he makes a terrific catch at the track. Bruce Bochy telling us before the game that there are no signs of Angel Pagan having a hamstring operated on and missing 82 games. Further proof of that. That's a fine, fine play by Pagan. <laughs> Salutation accepted. Sure. Here's Chris Stewart now with two away. I'm not sure if Brendan Ryan knows who Vic Wirtz was. <laughs> Uh, but a, a great running catch in the outfield by a giant center fielder. Yes. It's rolled out to shortstop for Brandon Crawford. And that retires the side. Not before Eduardo Nunez can strike for just the second time this year. His two run home run, making it 5 0 New York. Five nothing as we start playing the top half of the fifth. Hector Sanchez, Brandon Crawford, Tony Abreu, the bottom third of the order against Ivan Nova, working with a more comfortable margin still. Hector Sanchez DHing this afternoon. The Giants technically in an interleague matchup, and one happening later in the season than ever before. A one hopper for Cano, who casually snatches it near the waist. And retires Sanchez for route number one. Caught that ball like he was going for a pocket watch. 
pocket watch. People still use pocket watches? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> there. With the pocket watch. In fact, they used to put uh, little pocket watch loops. In fact, I've got one in my in my pants right now that I didn't know I had. <laughs> There's Brandon Crawford now with one away. I'm serious. I learn something new about you every week. <laughs> and it sounds like you're learning something new about you today. <laughs> I'm learning something new about my pants. <laughs> A ball and no strikes to Brandon Crawford batting with the bases empty. Three base hits for the Giants this afternoon. A single by Blanco, doubles by Belt and Sandoval. They have been unable to get anybody past second base, however. That's on the ground for Ryan. Oh, man. On the second base side of the bag to retire Crawford. And it's the sixth assist. And the Giants are finding out this is the wrong guy to hit him to. Or anywhere near. He can pick it. The Yankees not playing Crawford in a shift there. You could usually count the number of plays a, a shortstop makes on that side of the bag on one hand. That's true. And a rare one there by Crawford, or rather by Ryan, to retire Crawford. And now with two away, it's Tony Abreu. The switch hitting ex Dodger getting a start at second base this afternoon. I know I could pick a better time to ask you about this than with two out on a two strike pitch to Tony Abreu. So instead of asking you, speaking of the Dodgers, that is, instead of asking you now your thoughts on the Dodgers swimming pool celebration during the week, the saga of the swimming pool, I, I guess I'll table that question for another time and we can get back to it. But for those that didn't see it, Earlier this week the Dodgers clinching the NL West and doing so earlier than any Los Angeles Dodger team had ever done it. And in their celebration they took to the pool at Chase Field in Phoenix. Agitating a lot of the Diamondbacks personnel along the way. We'll talk about that as we continue as Tony Abreu strikes out. That's four punch outs for Ivan Nova who shut out is in check through five. The all new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Pretty shot right there. The free 
Freedom Tower in Battery Park City. Ongoing construction there. Ongoing work here for the New York Yankees as they try to whittle away at that three game wild card deficit. Ichiro Suzuki leading off the fifth and out on a very close play at the bag at first. Very close play, very good play. Brandon Belt. A very, very good fielding first baseman. Vogelsong just with his right foot on the bag to beat Ichiro. Well done. One away to start the fifth, and now Alex Rodriguez, who drove in one of the three runs in the third with a ground ball to shortstop. Three in the third, two in the fourth. And that explains the Yankee advantage of five nothing in the middle of the afternoon. Two balls and no strikes. Station to station scoring in third. A two run home run by Nunez in the fourth. By the way, that home run allowed by Ryan Vogelsong. 15 home runs allowed in 18 starts. And last year, in almost twice as many starts, allowed only 17 home runs. It's just one of the ways in which Vogelsong's 2013 looks a whole lot different on paper. Mike Kickham and Guillermo Moscoso are up in the bullpen behind him at this juncture. Two balls and a strike. The count to Alex Rodriguez. Two and two. Kansas City and Texas later tonight, as we've discussed. The Indians play later tonight. Cleveland has eked its way into that second wild card seat for the time being. A half game better than the Rangers, who are in a free fall here in mid September. And it's a full count now three balls and two strikes to the ex Ranger, Alex Rodriguez. In terms of this series, the finale tomorrow afternoon, Andy Pettit and Yosmero Petit, who has been one of the few bright spots for the Giants down the stretch. There's the 3 2 to Alex Rodriguez, a shot for Sandoval right at him, and there are two away. Later today, Fox College Saturday, presented by Geico, continues on Fox Sports 1 with Louisiana Monroe trying to upset the number 20 Baylor Bears in Waco. Then on Fox, the 23rd ranked Arizona State Sun Devils head to Palo Alto to battle number 5 Stanford in the only game of the day that matches up two top 25 teams. Our full day of college football continues later on Fox and Fox Sports 1. To find Fox Sports 1 on your provider, go to foxsports1.com. Two away now for Robinson Cano. Well, the Giants have Cano played in that, uh, shall we say, Red Sox playbook Cano shift. Yeah, that's the most uniform shift we've seen all season. Like they're perfectly spaced. Robinson Cano with a bunt double eight days ago that Friday night in Boston. We did that game uh, at Fenway last week. And that happened the night before as the Yankees were swept by the Red Sox. Red Sox clinching last night. What a turnaround after winning only 69 games last year. Kind of turnaround that Major League Baseball just doesn't see. No. In fact, Boston is just the fourth big league team in history to lose 93 or more one season and then win 93 or more the next.
Cano jerks that into the glove of Brandon Belt right up the line at first to retire the side in order in the fifth. We played five complete this afternoon. It's still five nothing Yankees. Fiery Doritos Locos Tacos, Live Moss, and by Fox Sports 1. To find your channel, go to foxsports1.com. A 5 0 lead for the Yankees. Trying to hang in the crowded AL wildcard postseason picture, and so far, so good this afternoon. Angel Pagan to lead things off for San Francisco. Top of the Giants order against Devon Nova. And a drive out to center field that moves Curtis Granderson back to the track for the first down of the inning. Well, in addition to the Yankees still being in the postseason hunt, there was news this week in the Bronx because, in addition to the Mariano Rivera farewell tour, the other remaining member on the active roster that is of the core four, Andy Pettit. Made the announcement earlier this week in the Bronx that this will be his final season in the big leagues. There's Gregor Blanco with one away now. The winningest all time postseason pitcher. We put Andy Pettit in the AT&T player profile. Helping you do what you do better AT&T rethink possible. A 255 game winner during the regular season, five World Series rings, and a major league record 19 postseason victories. Andy Pettit will ride off into the sunset for a second time, recalling he had already retired once and then came back. Perhaps one of the most beloved Yankees of this or any other generation. 1 1 to Blanco is swatted in the air out to shallow left as Brendan Ryan backs off to make the catch. Ken Rosenthal is becoming a, a kind of a farewell tour for a lot of people around the Bronx this week. Well, Matt, Andy Pettit told me that he had made up his decision to retire before the season even began. He said that yesterday at his press conference as well. The only question in his mind was the timing of the announcement. I retired once, so I just was feeling a little awkward, you know, with that. Um, and was just going to wait till the season ended and the day after, a couple of days after, just have a conference call basically with our with our riders and just say it, uh, that I was going to retire. But just after, you know, talking with Joe, talking with a bunch of people that I dearly respect in this organization, um, 
felt like that I should say something. And deep down inside, you know, there, there was one regret that I had had as far as when I retired is I just never got a chance to, you know, kind of tip my cap and say goodbye to the fans. And, and deep down, that was something that I really would like to do. Now, Mariano, you had lunch with him, and he did give you some advice. What was that? Yeah, well, that was, you know, Mo's known for several months, you know, now that, that I was going to retire. And he all along has told me, you got to say something. And then we had lunch in Toronto, and, and I was just telling him I still didn't know what I was going to do if I was going to say anything. And then now it fell on the day that he was pitching. And, and he was just like, man, you got to do it. It doesn't matter. I mean, it'll make it, you know, it's going to make it even better, you know. So just the encouragement I got from him was, was really a huge factor for me also. He, he's such a great man. I love him to death. I love him like a brother. And uh, we've had so many special times together. Now, this could be your final home start. And I'm wondering, in your mind, what your emotions are going to be like. You know what? I... I think I'm going to be fine because I'm so focused because we still have a chance to, you know, so the focus is completely on just just pitching and, and, and trying to figure out a way to, to battle and just getting my mindset on that. So I don't know how I'll be after the game. I, I have no idea. Um, I know it's going to be a lot harder this time for me just because I'm around all the guys. Well, Andy Pettit has two more starts left in the regular season. And as you heard him allude to, tomorrow, his last, perhaps his last home start. It'll come on Mariano Rivera Day, which gave him a little pause, as you could tell. Brandon Belt swats a base hit into right. And then his final start, quite possibly in the big leagues, should the Yankees fail to qualify for the postseason, will come in his hometown of Houston on Saturday. On the Yankees' all time win list, he is number three. Or it could be the start of his life if the Yankees. Uh can work a miracle through next weekend. The Yankees have three games against Tampa Bay on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday here at Yankee Stadium. Off day Thursday and then close the weekend season, the regular season, against the Astros next weekend. There's Buster Posey with a runner aboard and two gone. You just wonder about the emotional, if the Yankees win today and beat the Giants, about the emotional makeup of Andy Pettit on Mariano Rivera day tomorrow pitching in as big a game as that will be. It's a lot to be thinking about. Yeah and, and something tells me and it, tell me if you disagree that had Mariano Rivera and Andy Pettit had lunch and Andy got the sense that Mariano would have taken exception to the announcement. I don't think he would have made the announcement as he did. Mm. That's into right for Ichiro in the corner to retire the side. I think you're right. Nothing in the Giants half of the sixth as Nova strands another. Gonzalez getting the start for the O's on a night where these two teams played 
18 innings the night before. Gonzalez terrific so far. Alex Cobb answering. That's his seventh strikeout, 3 5. Two hits combined in this game. Scoreless, bottom five inside the drop. Now let's get you back out to the Bronx and rejoin Matt Vesgers and Tim McCarver and Ken Rosenthal. All right, Greg, thanks. And uh, Greg will keep us current on all the, ha the uh, happenings between the Orioles and Rays on a very important day for both of those teams and an important day for the New York Yankees trying to cut into that three game wild card deficit. Ryan Vogel song done for the afternoon. He yields in favor of former Oakland A right hander Guillermo Moscoso. Vogel song departs after five innings, having allowed five earned runs on five hits. Moscoso gets Soriano, Granderson, and Nunez in the sixth. One swing by Alfonso Soriano, and it's 6 0 Yankees. Well, you talk about jumping the count. Also, talking about a guy who hopes, obviously, that the Yankees are in the postseason so he can put, continue to put on the display that he has put in, put on since July 26th. Even new handshakes with the Yankees. <laughs> Sitting on a fastball, got it. What an incredible offensive two months it's been for Soriano. One guy who is saying that it's better to leave Wrigley Field because where he's going is a better home run park. <laughs> Could you imagine that ever being said about anywhere else outside no. of Coors Field in Denver? Nope. A ball and a strike to count to Curtis Granderson. Well, we're seeing this afternoon two of the players most responsible for the Yankees' August resurgence contribute mightily today. Alfonso Soriano, whose August has been well documented, we talked about it earlier, and Ivan Nova, who was the August American League Pitcher of the Month, a splendid 4-0 record in August. And they are the two players at the core of the Yankees' success this afternoon. Six shutout innings by Ivan Nova, and a home run for Soriano. Two balls and two strikes. The count to Curtis Granderson. Joe Girardi just hoping that the uh, the last specks of sand in the hourglass can fall into the right place. Not only do the Yankees need to stay hot, perhaps win out, somebody needs to do an El Foldo on top. The Rangers have been most obliging so far, 4 and 14 this month. And a wave and a miss, one gone for Moscoso in the sixth. Speaking of Ivan Nova, let's take a look at the Fox Sports 1 pitcher comparison presented by Fox Sports 1, now available on all TV providers. Go to foxsports.one, foxsports1.com to find out what channel. Ryan Vogelsong through five, knocked around for five earned. Nova's line pretty clean. Doesn't get much cleaner, as a matter of fact. No. The ability to get the Giants to hit the ball on the ground, the big reason Nova has been so successful today. Eduardo Nunez is homered. His came with a man aboard, nobody out in the fourth, and made it at the time 5 0 Yankees. Oh and two. You know the tough year that the Giants have had. We've already documented their winning percentage as a defending World Series champ. It's one of the worst in the last 30 years. For many the conversation begins with the pitching staff. On which the Giants had built their success winning two World Series in three seasons. As Nunez grounds to second. 
It's been a tough thing to figure out if you're Dave Rigetti, the very fine pitching coach of the Giants. Not for lack of work, not for lack of exploring options and being creative, but each individual performance from Kane and Lincecum and Vogelsong on down seems to have taken a step back as compared to the last handful of seasons. Here's Mark Reynolds with two gone now. Tim Lincecum's case will certainly be an interesting one moving forward. He's a free agent at season's end. Deserved a better fate last night. And according to Bruce Bochy, that's really been the story of his season. He's thrown the ball a lot more effectively since the All-Star break, but has not had the results to show for it. Whether or not the two-time Cy Young Award winner returns to San Francisco remains unclear. And it's 0 2 now to Mark Reynolds. Well, the giant pitchers are more or less used to the fact that they're not going to get offensive support. It's not an offensive team. It's not a team that plays in an offensive park. But at least they've gotten defensive support prior to this year. But this year's been different. We talked about it earlier. Yeah, only the Milwaukee Brewers. Have a worse team fielding percentage among National League clubs than the Giants. And as Tim mentioned earlier, that's the one thing that has most troubled Bruce Bochy this year. Reynolds hanging around on 0 2. The Giants will start their organizational meetings the first day of the offseason. Bruce telling us before the game today. Brian Sabian and his staff, the coaching staff, they will assemble at the first opportunity to uh, evaluate what they have moving forward. A ball and two strikes, the count to Mark Reynolds. Hunter Pence is among the question marks. I know his name was kicked around a lot prior to the trading deadline. He was approached by management and asked if in fact he'd still consider coming back to San Francisco if a deal was made for him. He said he would. No deal was struck. And whether or not he walks into the open market remains unclear. Two balls and two strikes. They count to Mark Reynolds. Well when you win you sign long term contracts. The Giants. Won a World Series, they signed Marco Scudero to a long term contract. Angel Pagan, Buster Posey last year before the season was over. When you don't win, the question marks go up. The same, the baseball world over. Ken Rosenthal, every team has its uh, <laughs> long term contract albatrosses. I think the Giants are still paying Rennie Stennett, if I'm not mistaken. Is that true? <laughs> Not sure about that, Matt, but you're right. Pence is the big question. Best right handed hitting outfielder eligible for free agency, along with Nelson Cruz, but Nelson Cruz coming off a PED suspension. Reynolds lines softly into center for Angel Pagan. Nothing further after the Soriano home run. His 17th of the year makes it 6 0 Yankees as we return to New York after a word from your local Fox station.
July 4th, 1983. Lanky left-hander in San Jose, California native Dave Brigetti throws a no-hitter for the New York Yankees. One of 11 Yankee no-hitters in franchise history and that one coming with an exclamation point as it was thrown on George Steinbrenner's birthday that year. Hunter Pence leads things off in the San Francisco seventh as we talked a little bit about the man affectionately referred to as Rags last half inning. Pence bounces that up the middle. Another flashy play by Brendan Ryan, and there's one gone. We had a chance to visit with Dave Rigetti between innings, and we asked him about coming back to New York. Yeah, it is. I couldn't say that it isn't. Uh, being on this side of the field is a little weird, but um, yeah, it's a special uh, place for myself and our family, and uh, you know, these. I basically grew up here, so it's my second home. You grew up here. You were a great starter for the Yankees, uh, the no-hitter back on July 4th, 1983. Yeah. And, uh, my gosh, you were a reliever here. And, and you really learned your art of being a pitching coach as a result. Yeah, we had quite a few of them in those days. <laughs> we, uh, we had about 18 of them in about 12 years. We had but some wonderful guys and guys that are still in the game today like you know it was Art Fowler and Mark Connor and Stan Williams and Clyde King and uh, Sammy Ellis and people like that so it's I was lucky guy to grow up in that atmosphere and uh, great coaching obviously a lot of great players Dave thanks for the visit right, and uh, we look forward to catching up with you again soon I appreciate thanks. it thank you very much so many great parallels with Dave Rigetti's career between the Yankees and Giants as Pablo Sandoval squirts one past Mark Reynolds into right. Dave was born in 1958, the first year the Giants played in San Francisco. At Seal Stadium. Born in San Jose, most definitely Giants territory in Northern California. Established his major league star, of course, in New York. 11 of his 16 seasons as a Yankee and then goes back to San Francisco to become the Giants pitching coach some 15 years ago. He is the longest tenured pitching coach in baseball today. Mm -hmm. Here's Hector Sanchez now with a runner aboard and one away. Matt the uh, the parallels don't stop there either. Brian Sabian was with the Yankees. He's the general manager of the Giants now. Dick Tidro. Brian Sabian's assistant. In fact, I ran into Dick right outside the booth earlier today. I hadn't seen him in 20 years. And they have done uh, such a terrific job in putting this organization together. But it is, uh, it's almost like New York West in San Francisco as far as the personnel of the front office. And the field personnel. Boy, all these years later. Yeah. I'm still talking about New York West, I agree. Yeah. 1 1 to Hector Sanchez. Misses low, and it's two balls and a strike. Brandon Crawford next. The Giants still without a base runner past second this afternoon. Popped into shallow left Soriano in the Sunfield. He's had some trouble out there already today, but makes this play for route number two as we go back to Greg Ansinger in the MLB Network studios with a game break. Matty, are there runs on the board inside the drop? The answer is yes. Desmond Jennings connects a three-run blast. Bottom five, his 14th of the year. That's the 25th home run in 17 games. The Rays have hit against the O's this season. No team has hit or given up more home runs than the Orioles. Matty, back to you. All right, Greg, thanks. And uh, the Rays with their patented late season magic appear in the midst of doing it again. Baltimore's on the verge of dropping their third in a row and their seventh in their last 11 tries. Still plenty of time left in St. Pete. Here's Brandon Crawford now with two away. Now that magical end of the 2011 season is one that the Yankees have used as an example this year. The Washington Nationals who have more playoff life now than they have had at any point during the season. I'm sure they've discussed what the Rays and the Cardinals did at the end of 2011. 
that's most poignant for the Washington Nationals who with 11 to play were five and a half out of a postseason spot. That's the exact same deficit that the 2011 Cardinals faced. And we know how that one ended. Cardinals get there and win it all. Two years ago, the last day of the season, the most celebratory Wednesday that baseball has ever been a part of. With that AL West or AL East rather and wild card picture with Baltimore upending the Red Sox. And then the Rays beating the Yankees in extra innings. Back up the middle. Look at Brendan Ryan really shining defensively this afternoon. His eighth assist. Most of the time, the hard way. He's been a big part of Ivan Nova's seven scoreless innings today. of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. And by Mazda, we believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. Yeah, the Yankees have built a 6-0 lead as we take a look at the Just for Men Auto Stop foolproof stat. Talking about Mariano Rivera. Tomorrow being Mariano Rivera Day here at Yankee Stadium. The all time saves leader 42 coming in the postseason. That's the most all time then as well. Five World Series rings and a 1999 World Series MVP. The Mariano Rivera kind of goodbye farewell tour took a stop in Boston last Sunday night. A terrific ceremony paying tribute to the all time closer with all the Red Sox players on the field. It was such a well done night. Is number 42, a tribute by players on both sides. All the Red Sox out of the dugout, most signed the dugout wall. Very emotional night in Boston on Sunday. Another example of class begetting class. Red Sox and Rivera. Talk about going out on top. His 44 saves in what is his final season, the most of anybody. In their last season in the big leagues. The former great giant closer Rob Nen on that list with 43. And Mo will not be talked back into service. He's made that very clear the last few weeks, despite what the blogosphere and the talk radio circuit has had to say about it. Brendan Ryan leads things off in the Yankee half of the seventh. Ryan Stewart and Ichiro. What a game uh, Brendan Ryan has had. 
this afternoon. You know how hard it is to make this play that Ryan made to end the seventh inning? Way behind him. He almost threw the ball behind his back. Cano following on the play to, to get the put out. Put on a clinic out there today with his eight assists. Oh, one breaking ball swung out and missed. Moscoso on top, 0 and 2. For the left hander, Mike Kickham back up in the bullpen for the second time. And likely the next in for Bruce Bochy this afternoon. And a wave and a miss. There's one gone in the last of the seventh. Well, Mariano Rivera day tomorrow. Andy Pettit starting tomorrow in what might be his final home start as a Yankee. His final home start as an active player. Their win save combination of 72 is the most all time. And that is on the same night in the box score when Andy Pettit gets the win, Mariano Rivera gets a save. It's happened 72 times. One away now for Chris Stewart. A lot of people have come out this weekend to uh, pay their tributes, their respects to Mariano Rivera and now Andy Pettit. Including former Secretary of State and Nobel Peace Prize winner Henry Kissinger, who comes out to say, job well done. That's big time right there. I was going to say, right? <laughs> big time. Still to this day, whenever I see Henry Kissinger in public, I feel like I should see Dick Cavett a couple of seats away from him. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes to count to Chris Stewart. This has been all Yankees this afternoon ever since the three runs in support of Ivan Nova in the third. A pair of home runs have aided his cause. Two runs shot by Eduardo Nunez and a solo home run by Alfonso Soriano. Hey. Two and two. Ichiro waiting next with one out and the base is empty. But there's a lot of anticipation building for the Mariano Rivera Day celebration tomorrow. Based in part over the fact that Metallica, whose Enter Sandman song has been Moe's theme these past number of years, are playing tonight in Manhattan. So there are a lot of people out there trying to connect the dots saying maybe Metallica will show up to play live at Mariano Rivera Day at Yankee Stadium tomorrow. We shall see. Ball four to Stewart puts a Yankee base runner aboard with one away. This game summary brought to you by Domino's. Oh yes we did. Von Nova doing it today. Seven shutout innings. The Giants are 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. Part of a season long frustration for San Francisco is that'll do it for Guillermo Moscoso gone after a third of an inning here in the seventh. He'll leave with a man aboard in favor of Mike Kickham. A pitching change. We'll be right back.
one out and one on in the home half of inning number seven. Kickham was recalled from Triple A Fresno at the end of August. This is his fifth appearance on the big league roster this year alone as Ichiro Suzuki is the first to face him. Kickham's had some opportunities in the rotation. He was used as a starter at Triple A Fresno. And it's 0 2 to Ichiro. Got to like him against left handed hitters the way he drops down, forcing a guy like Ichiro, an experienced hitter with over 4,000 hits professionally, to bail a little. Alex Rodriguez waiting next. The Yankees on top, 6 0. They have kept the Giants at bay for much of, if not the entire afternoon. Very few opportunities for San Francisco. Row with a soft fly ball out to left center field for Angel Pagan and two away. A reminder to catch all the action of the 2013 Major League Baseball postseason on Fox, TBS, and MLB Network starting October 1st. Postseason implications coming up on the schedule tonight. The Indians playing host to Houston. The Rangers and Royals matching up later tonight as well. Baltimore and Tampa Bay are in progress. Greg Amsinger gave us an update from St. Pete. Rays on top 3 nothing. A ball and no strikes. The count to Alex Rodriguez. A-Rod is 0 for 2 this afternoon. He drove in his 19th run of the year with a ground out in the third. Well, Guillermo Moscoso goes an inning in a third, allows the one run. The former Oakland A done for the afternoon. And speaking of the Oakland A's, another terrific late season run for Bob Melvin's guys in the green and gold streaking toward another postseason berth. I mean they're not a surprise anymore. Ninety one wins this year after ninety four last year. The strike to Rodriguez and it's two balls and two strikes. A's by seven and a half. In the AL West. Tim mentioned earlier if you stop paying attention sometime a couple of weeks ago and are just picking up the newspaper today, it looks a lot different than it did when the Rangers had a two game lead over Oakland entering September. Yeah. Oakland's at home tonight with Jared Parker on the mound hosting the Twins. Three balls and two strikes. The count to Alex Rodriguez. Robinson Cano waiting next. A runner aboard with two out here in the seventh. A reminder to log on to foxsports.com slash ace for your chance to win a sports room makeover. Oakland's got that magic number at two. Clinching tonight with a win and a Texas loss. Runner goes. A Rod fouls it away again. And that's a team that uh, celebrates home runs, walk off wins, and has a lot of fun seemingly without offending anybody. And so does their fan base. Same thing. Those gyrations when. When their closer comes into the game is the strangest thing I've ever seen. The rage. Oh, I'm telling you. Yeah. It's wonderful. When Grant Balfour gets out there and if, yeah. it, if they're not doing the Bernie thing <laughs> as they did last year. I've got to say, man, I don't quite understand it. The rage. That is the rage in Oakland. I don't quite understand it, but I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. I think a lot of people agree with you. Yeah. And I'm not sure we're supposed to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's wonderful. A fun phenomenon to witness. Yeah. 
Full count, three balls and two strikes. It remains to Alex Rodriguez. And he takes a called strike three. Mike Kickham strands a base runner in the seventh to the eighth. The Yankees continue to lead at 6 0. Sun starting to set over the Bronx at Yankee Stadium and the uh, sun starting to set over the San Francisco Giants this afternoon. Pardon the bad pun, but it is the reality of the situation. Down 6 0. It's been all New York Yankees this afternoon. Tony Abreu followed by Angel Pagan and Gregor Blanco. And Ivan Nova has been the reason for those giant shortcomings today. Comebacker, and it's another in a series of quick outs for the New York right hander. Monday don't miss an all new episode of Mission October as we give you an inside look at the surprise team in the American League the underdog Cleveland Indians as they fight to play in October Mission October trending tribe is this Monday only on Fox Sports one to find Fox Sports one on your provider go to Fox Sports one dot com. Seven and a third so far for Ivan Nova as he goes to work on Angel Pagan. That's 22 outs, 14 via the ground ball. Without question, this is Ivan Nova's best performance since winning the AL Pitcher of the Month honor for August. His September was not quite as encouraging, Ken Rosenthal, but he's turned in a terrific day here this afternoon. You're right, Matt, and this was a big start for him. I spoke with him yesterday and this is a kid who sometimes has made some brash statements but he was quite subdued. He had three poor starts in a row against Boston twice Baltimore once good offensive teams. But let's face it Ivan Nova is a huge part of the Yankees future. You've got Pettit retiring Hiroki Kuroda and Phil Hughes are free agents. They need him to be an integral part of their rotation next season. If there is one thing that this game can do Ken and Matt it's subdue you. <laughs> They're the numbers for Nova again his September not quite as encouraging after a lights out August as Pagan lays off and it runs the count to three balls and no strikes. There's ball four. Well we mentioned the Oakland A's playing later on tonight can clinch the AL West with a win and a Texas loss and earlier this week 
the Los Angeles Dodgers clinched the NL West in Phoenix and took the celebration to the host pool at Chase Field. And that was a celebration that really rankled members of the Arizona Diamondbacks roster from the front office on down and out of the organization. Fans of the Diamondbacks weren't real happy with the apparent lack of respect. At least that was the accusation thrown on the Dodgers. I think that's the key thing is the respect. Had they done it with the permission of the Diamondbacks and their management and their fans, then, then people are a little more playful about it. But without their permission, I think that's why that uh, had John McCain, Senator John McCain, with that Twitter that was tough. Yeah. I yeah. mean, tough. First of all, the thought of Senator John McCain taking to Twitter is entertaining enough. <laughs> Secondly, the fact that he would uh, leave his political world to chastise the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah. And he did have some very strong words for them. Very strong. Uh, immature, arrogant, spoiled brats, I believe, was the uh, the nature of the quote. Those are strong words. Because that caught everybody's attention. Mm. And, and, you know, in defense of the Dodgers, Ken Rosenthal, I, I'm not sure that they meant to disrespect the Diamondbacks. They were celebrating. There was a pool nearby, and they went into it. I would agree with that, Matt. And generally speaking, I'm not offended by very much in the way of celebrations because... I think the game needs more color. At the same time, there is a phrase players use all the time. Act like you've been there. And Willie Bloomquist of the Diamondbacks made a great point. He said, do you think the Yankees would ever do something like that? And think about it, guys. Can you imagine Derek Jeter jumping into a pool? Mariano Rivera? Andy Pettit? I don't see it. That's a point well taken. And I think a lot of the Diamondbacks echoed those same sentiments. And I Again, I don't know that the Dodgers intended to disrespect anybody. They they had a celebration and there was a pool and they took the celebration into it. That was that. I, I have not heard or, or uh, would imagine that Don Mattingly knew about it. Speaking of the Yankees, was Don Mattingly, of course, being weaned in this organization as one of the great players ever to play for the Yankees and a classy guy in his own right. I'm not sure he really gave his blessing if he did know about it. It was quite a visual, I'll say that, to mm -hmm. see the Dodgers in the. Uh, I mean, short of uh, short of a baby Ruth bar, it was almost like the caddy swim sequence in Caddyshack. Oh, and two. The count remains to Gregor Blanco. The baseball note there is that the Dodgers clinched a division. Earlier than they ever had in franchise history, that is, since moving to LA in uh, in '58. Which was a surprise to me. Oh, and two, it remains to Gregor Blanco. You know, the, the question for the Dodgers now is something that a lot of those teams who have wrapped up early are wrestling with. And How do the you Red stay so sharp? Staying sharp. Yep. The Red Sox are That's among right. them. You know, the Red Sox finished with the best record in the American League, and they're en route for just that. They're going to have a four day layoff between the end of the regular season and when they begin their division series game. Mm -hmm. And we all know uh, what happens when you get there too soon. Ask, ask, uh, Jim Leland and the Tigers about that. What can happen, I should say. Ask Clint Hurdle when he was the manager of the Colorado Rockies. They had to wait that long to play the Red Sox and were swept by Boston. Two balls and two strikes. The count to Gregor Blanco. Pagan with an aggressive lead, not running down. Six nothing and Blanco swings and misses. Five strikeouts for Ivan Nova this afternoon. Fans coming to the ballpark have had a chance to witness some terrific pitching. Hey, let's take you around Yankee Stadium. Brought to you by Fox Sports One's Fan Cam. Fox Sports One available on all TV providers. Go to FoxSportsOne.com to find out what channel. You made an appearance on Fox Sports One yesterday, understand? I am proud to say that I did. Crowd goes wild with uh, Regis Philbin. And what a cast of talented people.
he has on that show. Young, vibrant, smart. Katie Nolan, Georgie Thompson are the two females on the panel. Michael Costa, Jason Gay, who is also a writer for the Wall Street Journal, and Trevor Price, ex football player. Boy, they're fun, they're talented, they're funny, they're smart. I heard you killed on the show yesterday. <laughs> I didn't. All I did was laugh. I, I, your bookings are your bookings I, have increased dramatically. <laughs> all I did was laugh. <laughs> that was my contribution to Regis and his, and the crowd goes wild yesterday. But it's it's a very very sharp show from five to six every day during the week. Oh, and two to Brandon Bell. Another punch out on a breaking ball. Eight shutout innings by Ivan Nova this afternoon. Still 6 nothing New York. Find new roads and by Bayer Advanced Aspirin, the official pain reliever of Major League Baseball. Six nothing Yankees. Joe Girardi's edict of taking it one day at a time. So far, so good for this day. Now the Yankees still hoping for some help on the scoreboard later on tonight. The three game deficit certainly has not affected that young fan's state of mind. Proud to be me. That's what that says. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care if there's a three game deficit, a 30 game deficit. Just give me my juice box. Yeah. There's someplace warm to sit. Talk about somebody taking it one day at a time. <laughs> he is. You saw Nick Noonan, the new third baseman for the Giants, as Robinson Cano leads things off in the New York half of the eighth. La Potencia. Yoenna Cespedes has fans on this side of the country. How about that? Why not? Comes to New York and wins the home run derby. They paid attention in New York this summer. A ball and a strike to count to Robinson Cano. Cano's driven in a run today, his 105th of the season. And that's whacked into right center. Extra base hit to lead off the Yankee half of the eighth. A 
A reminder Fox Sports 1 starts off your Sunday mornings with Fox NFL kickoff as the guys get you up to speed on all that's happening around the league. And this week you won't want to miss Mike Tyson as he drops by the studio. Then turn over to Fox to catch Kurt, Terry, Howie, and Jimmy and Michael on America's number one pregame show, Fox NFL Sunday. Get more football tomorrow starting at 11 a.m. Eastern only on Fox Sports 1. Leadoff double in the home eighth, and it puts a runner in scoring position for Alfonso Soriano. Soriano, his homer today, came to lead off the sixth on the first pitch thrown by Guillermo Moscoso in relief. Now, speaking of home run hitting Yankee legends. Reggie Jackson in the ballpark this afternoon. Soriano pops it into right. One away in the eighth. You know, with all the uncertainty moving forward regarding the Yankees' 2014 roster, problematic. And it is that. It is that they, very they do know that Joe Girardi doesn't have a deal for next year. Alfonso Soriano does. He was not acquired by the Cubs just as a half season rental. He's under contract through 2014. Beyond his big bat. There are so many other questions more oh. questions than answers I think moving forward here. The biggest question is. How much will Robinson Cano cost? Mm. And will there be enough in the coffers here? You never thought you'd say that about the Yankees payroll moving forward, but trying to get under that threshold to avoid being crushed by the luxury tax. Unsure if they're going to have to pay Alex Rodriguez next year or not. Curtis Granderson bounces it to second, and there are two away. Andy Pettit's money off the books. Mariano Rivera retiring as well. Those are two of the best bargains the Yankees signed, however. Yeah, that's a good point. No. Here's Eduardo Nunez now with two gone. A farm system that is not considered to be the best in baseball. Nunez is homer this afternoon his second of the year made it five nothing back in the fourth. The Yankees added on one on the Soriano home run in the sixth. We talked about the price the Giants have paid being and winning two World Series in the last three years. The Yankees similarly. 18 out of 20 years in the postseason. Obviously they didn't win every year but they contended. And you pay for that. You pay for it in the draft. You pay for it in the contract negotiations with the players you have to pay. Boy, and you certainly pay for it in terms of the luxury tax. That's mm -hmm. something that uh, the Yankees are trying to avoid really stepping into next year. Three balls and no strikes. The count to Eduardo Nunez. If you don't sign Robinson Cano, how do you sell season tickets? There's ball four. I don't know that the concern of re signing Cano would have even been there had the Dodgers not been manufacturing money somewhere in the basement, as seems to be the case. Very good point. A lot of questions moving forward. Another pitching change for the Giants, and we'll be right back.
two on two out last of the eighth and Bruce Bochy has summoned help from the bullpen 25 year old right hander Jake Dunning. He has been part of the Fresno San Francisco shuttle Fresno the triple A affiliate of the Giants just like the Scranton Wilkes-Barre area in Pennsylvania is the triple A affiliate of the Yankees. Dunning will try to retire Mark Reynolds to put an end to the home eighth. Runners at first and third with two away. Jake's had a couple of stints with the big league club this year, as Tim alluded to. Little comebacker for him. And Reynolds is retired, part of a scoreless last of the eighth. Last licks for the visiting Giants coming up on the top of the night. San Francisco down 6 zip. Well, Joe Girardi giving Ivan Nova a well-deserved opportunity to finish what he has started this afternoon. Six nothing New York and only Buster Posey, Hunter Pence and Pablo Sandoval stand in the way of a Nova complete game shutout victory. He is now just two outs away from earning that. Ivan Nova responsible for this afternoon's Burger King plays of the game brought to you by Burger King where taste is king six shutout or six strikeouts for him this afternoon and five of those Tim coming on that big 12 to 6 breaking ball his only other uh, complete game shutout coming on the 31st of August against Baltimore he pitched a three hitter against the Orioles and good at the right time for the Yankees. Here's Hunter Pence now with one away. Well, as we've talked about all afternoon long, the Yankees will be among those doing some scoreboard watching tonight. Pence lines this into left. Soriano's got it. And Nova's one out away from a shutout this afternoon. I've never understood that when players or managers or coaches say they don't watch a scoreboard. That's nonsense. Brokers watch the ticker, don't they? <laughs> That's a great point. Here's Nick Noonan. His first plate appearance this afternoon after coming on defensively last half inning. 
You know, the hard part about scoreboard watching for the Yankees today is that they're they're hoping for help with the Houston Astros who are in Cleveland. Tough assignment for a young Astros team. Cleveland's playing some motivated baseball down the stretch. They've got that second wild card spot by a half game. Noonan lines to left. A two out single in the top half of the night. Pinch hitter will be Johnny Manel. Batting for Hector Sanchez in the DH spot. A two out base runner, 6 0 New York, top half of the ninth. And 0 and 1 to the pinch hitter. Greg Amsinger and Mitch Williams standing by with the postgame show. They'll have the latest from St. Pete, where the Rays lead the Orioles 5 0 in the eighth. Assuming a Rays win there, assuming a Yankees win here. Tampa Bay hangs on to one of the two wild card spots. Baltimore moves to three back of the second wild card spot. And they'll be joining the Yankees doing some scoreboard watching tonight. Texas and Kansas City playing head to head. And again, Cleveland playing host. To Houston. Crowd on its feet and supportive of Von Nova. What a way to finish. Ivan Nova's seventh strikeout of the afternoon seals up a 6 0 complete game shutout win. Brilliant performance by Ivan Nova. Supernova today. All but one of his strikeouts came on that big heavy curveball. The Giants really couldn't get anything started this afternoon. They didn't get a base runner past second. A six nothing Yankees the final score this afternoon. New York's taken the first two games of the series to update the AL wildcard standings through the Yankees win this afternoon. New York now joining Baltimore and Kansas City two and a half back of the second wildcard spot in the American League. Coming up next, we'll send it back to the MLB Network Studios post-game coverage for Tim McCarver and Ken Rosenthal, Matt Vaskersian, the post-game show right after these messages.